welcome to Make a Star Productions podcast show. My name is Cortez Jackson. I am your host. I'd like to welcome you back. As you know, I always start my show off with a, a little monologue and just some things that I want to discuss. One of them is this pandemic is, is getting outrageous. People still don't understand it. The second wave is, is coming through 50 states. The hospitals are filling back up again. People better start understanding and get a grip on what's going on. If you're not vaccinated, you need to get vaccinated. If you got some health issues, talk to your doctors and find out if you can or can't. Because I would really hate to see you uh, lose your life over something that could save your life. Also, I'd like to talk about the assassination of the president of Haiti. Well, I tell you, this world is still, still going strong. Death do not take a holiday. They assassinated the president of Haiti last week. They shot his wife. Thank God she survived. But uh, she was just telling the story how they shot him 13 times. My God, my God, 13 times. And it was two Americans that was captured. And the funny part about that is they said they were only translators. What are you translating? <laughs> How to kill somebody? <laughs> um, and a lot of the assassins were um, Colombians in uh, another country. Then come to find out that um, one of the uh, people in Haiti, uh, I don't know if he was a cabinet member or whoever, but was told that he was the one that um, recruited those assassins to um, they were only supposed to arrest the president that's what they said but how you was only supposed to arrest him if you shot him 13 times come on now let's be for real about that you did what y'all intended on doing was assassinating that man and that's what you did so that's just my little commentary for the day uh, we're getting ready to get into my show I have a guest on today, the beautiful Miss Tina Mobley. If you do not know Miss Mobley, she has her own talk show. It's entitled Real Talk with Tina Mobley. It comes on DATV on station 992. If you have not tuned into her show, you need to tune into her show. Uh, she's very inquisitive. She has a very good guest on her show. Her show is spiritually based. Um, it's a religious show, so they do talk about um, the religion. So that's basically what her show is about. And also, this young lady is a fantastic singer. I'm trying to get her out there. <laughs> she keeps telling me she's praying on it and praying on it. I said, okay, well, you keep on praying. Don't, don't, <laughs> don't lose that opportunity because there's a lot of doors that could open for her. She is a fantastic singer. If you have not seen her sing, come watch my show on Channel 5. You don't know my story. She is my resident singer. She comes on every time I have my show. She's my resident singer. She sings on my show, and she does a fantastic job. So without further ado, we're going to get into this show. I want to introduce to you Miss Tina Mobley. Hey, Tina. Hi, dear. Thank you so much for another privilege to be with you Amen. on the air. Mm -hmm. All right. Yes. So, Miss Mobley, tell my audience a little bit about Miss Mobley, who she is, what she's about, and uh, what she's doing with her life. I am a lifetime Daytonian, born and raised here in Dayton. Um, I have traveled abroad and I've lived in Germany and um, California and ooh, Georgia, <laughs> just pretty much a little bit of every place. Um, I'm really grateful for those opportunities to travel abroad and learn the different cultures. And I am a mother of three adult children, two sons and one daughter. Mm -hmm. I have 
10 grandchildren, Ooh. and I have two great grandchildren. Hey, grandma. So <laughs> I'm Glamo. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, oh goodness, let's see. I love to sing, um, gospel singer, jazz singer, and um, I'm a writer and a poet. I love the spoken word, and I am starting to dwell now in acting, and so I'm really excited about that. Just a whole nother journey of my life, just beginning. Okay, okay, okay. Well, sounds fantastic, but um, let's get into a little more depth about Miss Tina Mobley. Now, she is a uh, evangelist. Uh, she is spiritually based. Um, she do trust and believe in God. Her faith is in the Lord. Now, God do allow her to do things outside of her church, so don't think that she's just about church. She is about God. God first, everything else is secondary. So tell my audience a little more about Tina. I'm glad you said that um, about God first. As an evangelist, I think people have uh, a misconception that if you are a woman of God, that you should not do things of the world. Uh, but that is a part of who I am, mm -hmm. um, singing poetry. I love to do those things. I truly, truly do. And um, I am anointed and that is a gift from God. And so with my evangelism, my goals are to minister. I'm a street minister. Mm -hmm. So I don't believe that you have to confine your ministry to a wall or to a building. Evangelists are supposed to go out in places where others will not go and speak the word of God. And so um, my aspirations and goals are to someday I just want to focus mainly on missionary work. Mm -hmm. And I would like to also um, just get a building of my own and just have that set up for the young people who are graduating out of the foster care system and just give them a place for them to stay as they are advancing on their journey as an adult and mm -hmm. just learning how to maneuver their way through life. And sometimes, you know, they are just put out into the world at 18 and they have to figure it all out themselves. And so I just want to start a ministry there in helping them. Mm, sounds good, sounds good. Now you also, you work at a uh, facility, well not a facility, you work at a place called Close Our... Close That Work. Close That Work. Now as you can look at her and see, clothes do work <laughs> <laughs> she's a person that loves to dress <laughs> this is a dressy dressy woman she don't go no i don't think i ever seen her in a pair of jeans <laughs> if she do she'd be hiding in the house but uh, <laughs> but she is a beautiful dressy woman so tell us a little bit about your job and what is it that you do i love my job clothes that work uh, we are actually located at the Montgomery County uh, Job and Family Services Building. And we are a uh, 501c3 nonprofit organization. And what we do is we fit people who have financial needs as far as being able to acquire interview clothes or work attire so they can get a uh, referral form to come to us. They can go to the job center, to the job bank services area, get qualified for a voucher to come and see us. And we just work with over 45 plus uh, organizations such as Goodwill, Easter Seals, Eastway, 
uh, Catholic Social Services, and so you can go to them as well. And when they come to me, I dress them from head to toe. <laughs> yes, I do, do everything that they need mm -hmm. and uh, at no cost to them. So that's what's so great about it. It's no cost to them. And then to reward them for getting employment, they can come back and I'll fit them in three to four more work uh, outfits um, from head to toe, shoes, everything that they need. We have some generous donors who donate clothing every day and organizations who donate to clothes that work. Um, the um, it's just, it's just a wonderful place to be because not only do we clothe people, we help them with soft skills as far as interviewing tips mm -hmm. and um, just how to carry themselves when they're going on an interview, some things that can cost them that interview. And uh, we just, it's just a wonderful place, wonderful place to be. The executive director is Cindy Garner and uh, we just have a small, it's a small but powerful organization. It truly, truly is. Okay, that sounds great. Um, one of the things that I do notice and I've seen about you is that uh, you're a very, very caring person and you take pride in everything that you do. So, um, and you spoke about acting. As you know, I'm a producer and I'm a writer of stage plays, and I'm already talking to you about a play that I'm doing for 2022. And it's just so funny because I've been going over it in my head. Matter of fact, I just got finished looking at one of my videos of, of one of my previous shows. And uh, I wanted you to come on as one of the daughters, but you were married to a rich husband. Mm -hmm. And in our previous show, um, her husband had came to her grandmother's birthday party and she always wanted a child. And he told her they were going back home and start on this child. But uh, the second half, uh, the second part of this play is called The Pandemic, where it leads off from grandma's birthday and it's going into uh, what started a few years ago, uh, The Pandemic. So this is going to be a really uh, fun play with a tragic ending. So uh, I wanted you to come on as the, uh, the woman that's married to the rich husband. You wind up leaving him again and coming back to <laughs> your, your mama and daddy's house. And, you know, you ain't too happy about your life. Mm -hmm. But the best part about it is the, the love of your mother and your grandmother will hopefully bring you through. So these are just some of the things that's coming up in 2022. So I'm excited for you to come on board. And uh, I will have a, uh, a, uh, a video that you can watch that will kind of give you an idea of what the daughters uh, consist of. But now you're going to have a little more than you think you're going to have. <laughs> she ain't have a lot in the first show. But she's going to have a lot more in this second show. And the, and the funny part about it is that um, uh, it's going to be a tragic end. Mm. I don't know who's who yet, but somebody is leaving this earth. Somebody is going home to be with their maker. Mm. And it's going to be all due to the pandemic. So it's some twists and turns. It's some funny parts and it's some sad parts and some tragedy but all in all it's going to be a very good play and it's called the pandemic and i can't wait for uh everything to get written um so we can put this thing together hopefully i'm gonna have the script ready for you guys by the, the beginning of the year because i like for the play to go on sometime in august if everything goes well uh, because i don't believe in putting plays on zoom you know, I want an audience. Mm -hmm. I think it's a, a, you get a better feel when you got people in the audience. And also, she will be singing at this play, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Don't think she's getting away without singing. <laughs> she will be singing. Now, getting back to Ms. Mobley. Uh, 
without going into a lot of the religious aspects, because as you know, this is a secondary show, mm -hmm. and I can't, I can't focus a lot on religion because they'll try to get me to change my program, and that's <laughs> not what the program is about. But tell uh, my my listening audience a little more about Real Talk with Tina Mobley. Real Talk with Tina Mobley is an interactive show, and um, I focus on writers, someone who's written a book, maybe it's about their life's journey, mm. and I will feature them on the show. Um, I feature nonprofit organizations, um, just people who are doing things in the community, and we have amazing, amazing praise dancers on the show as well. Mm -hmm. And so it's just a show. Um, there are a lot of writers out here in the city and surrounding areas who have written books about their life journey. And I just want people to see that there is phenomenal talent here in this city. And so that is really what the show is all about. We go deep into some uh, stories about their life and about their journeys. And it's just a great show. That's another thing that I want to kind of get in uh, touch bases with. Um, uh, your, your show does tell about people's lives, their ups, their downs, and the in-betweens. And that's similar to my show, You Don't Know My Story, um, where people come on and they actually tell their story. And, you know, I think that's the best part about it, when people come on and tell their story their way without anybody trying to push them. Because um, I know that the last show that you, uh, um, that you did, I uh, was there for that one. And, uh, I, I seen some swelling up of tears, and that's what I think that makes a show, is when somebody is being sincere, because when you can cry on your show, that's being sincere, mm -hmm. and it helps out a whole lot, because you'd be surprised the people that you touch yes. when you're doing that particular type of show, uh, there's some things that other people wanted to say, but didn't know how to say it. So they go through someone else. And hopefully what that will do is open the door for them. Now, um, how would, if someone wants to be on your show, how could they get in contact with you to be a, a, a guest on your show? Okay. Well, I want to first, when we are talking about my show, I want to say to you, thank you. Hmm because you are the one who opened that door for me. And I truly, truly appreciate you. And I'm gonna try not to cry right now because you know I'm a very sensitive and emotional person. Mm -hmm. And especially when someone has, God has placed them in my life um, to bless me. And so you have truly blessed me and I'm learning so much about uh, just being in production and the show itself. And so I'm so grateful for that. I just am truly, truly grateful. So if someone needs to reach me and they feel that they have something that they want the world to know about themselves, a book that they have written that they may be just having uh, a problem getting it out and would like people to know about the gift that God gave to them to publish this book. They can reach me through Facebook at Tina L. Mobley and um, or they can contact me at 937-603-0774. 
and leave me a message and I'll be happy to return their phone call. Uh, my show is, uh, we edit and um, have a show once a month and uh, I would gladly get back with them and I would just love to meet them, mm. love to meet them. Sounds good, sounds good to me. And thank you, thank you so much for that compliment. I really, really appreciate it that you feel the way you do because I remember when I first met you and I said, she needs a show. <laughs> <laughs> People need to see her and, and uh, see what she's all about. And I am so grateful and glad that um, you do have this particular show. Um, it was one thing, oh, I know what it is. If you don't mind talking about it, as we were talking about this pandemic, you know, all the people that kind of went through some things with this pandemic. Now, I had it, but I didn't have it like some folks. I had symptoms. I mean, I didn't get uh, a real bad fever. I didn't, um, I didn't get some of the things that other folks got, but I had to quarantine myself for 12 days because the uh, health department said I had to do it. So I did. Um, now, if you don't mind talking about some things that you went through uh, with this pandemic, see, because people need to know that this thing is not a joke. This thing is real, you know, and uh, sometimes it has to come from the horse's mouth in order for people to get a better understanding what this thing is all about. As you know, they're coming in with a second wave. And... You know, they're opening the schools back up for the kids, but they say uh, kids that are fully vaccinated don't have to wear masks. Mm -hmm. Teachers that are fully vaccinated don't have to make, wear masks. But they don't have to tell you. That don't sound cool to me because uh, well, a lot of us aren't being honest about this thing. I mean, when I go to the grocery markets, I still wear my mask because I don't mm -hmm. know all them people. I don't know who's right. trying to breathe on me or whatever, but it's just being cautious and protecting me. Now, if you don't mind, tell my audience a, a little bit about what you went through, if you don't mind. I don't mind. Uh, tell them what you went through as far as this uh, virus is concerned. Well, as you said, Cortez, in, in the beginning, COVID is real. Mm -hmm. There are some people who believe that it's fake. I'm not sure. They may need to go and visit a hospital and maybe spend a day on a COVID floor and then they will understand the realness of this. But when I got COVID um, in October, I just thought I had just a sinus infection, which I get all the time around that time of the year. And um, I didn't have a fever. I just had a runny nose. And um, I finally did get a fever later on that evening. I came to the hospital and the doctor said, well, it sounds like you just have sinus stuff going on, but we'll do a rapid test and we'll find out. And then when he came back in the room, he didn't come in the room, he stood at the door. And so I knew mm -hmm. what the results were. And he told me, you have SARS, you have COVID, 19 you have um your blood is sepsis and you have a kidney infection that's mm -hmm. all started from the COVID. but because your vital signs are good i'm going to send you home and you just reach out to your doctor and do a video appointment and uh, if you get worse come back to the hospital well i did get worse mm -hmm. and um but I didn't go back to the hospital. I just try to take care of myself as best as I could. Going into about um, four weeks into the COVID, I woke up one day and I was gasping for breath. I couldn't breathe, I couldn't catch my breath and went to the hospital again. The doctor said that he drew a picture of this arch and he put some dark spots at the top of it and he said blood clots have traveled from your legs into your both of your lungs and this is why you cannot breathe and we have to go in I'm going to have a vascular surgeon come in and tell you what they're going to do 
and that procedure um, put me in the ICU for a couple of days and um, I stayed in the hospital for about four days and because of the blood clots I still have some residuals from the COVID um, I have some trouble at times with with breathing and catching my breath um, I have some times when my memory is not as it was before I can't remember like just short-term memory things and so um, it's real and only by the grace of God is why I'm sitting here today and so I am one of those numbers of the people who have survived COVID mm -hmm. and so I'm just grateful that I'm here today yeah because um, you know a lot of people lost their lives to this um, pandemic um, what it, and I, I think it's still rising they're not they're not uh, broadcasting as much as they were but the last time that I heard I think they done went over 700 million something like that 2 million 2 million mm -hmm. but I know it's um, I know it's up there yeah okay and the thing about it is not knowing not knowing um, exactly what's what because mm -hmm. some people that did pass away from this they are now saying that uh, some of it was not COVID, but they weren't sure, mm -hmm. you know, so they just adding it all together. Um, but thank God you didn't have to go on what they call the COVID ward. Yes. Because I know people that went on on that floor did not come off they that didn't floor. Come off. So thank God that um, they did not put you on the COVID floor. Um so, but how is you? How are you doing now? Um, as far as a lot of things concerned, I know you probably still got bits and pieces that you're going through. So, what is going on with you right now? Well, I still deal with uh, fatigue. So, by the middle of the day, I'm pretty tired. Um, after I sing and perform, it normally takes maybe about two to three days for my lung capacity to build itself back up again. So I'm normally kind of hoarse for about two or three days. Um, but other than that, I just keep moving. I just keep moving. My doctor told me when the fatigue comes, just try to fight through it. Just try to fight through it and not succumb to it, you know, uh, with laying down a lot just to keep myself active and keep myself going. And but when I get extremely tired, it, then it's time to quit. Mm -hmm. But other than that, I am doing me and doing the things that I love. And I made a promise that once God got me through it, I'm just going to keep on keeping on and keep doing what I do and what I love to do best. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of people lost their sense of taste, their sense of smell. I know it's a young man that um, is a member of uh, my church. Uh, he didn't actually lose his taste through the COVID because he said he had a stroke. But uh, with a lot of other things that was coming on, he said he has not had a um, uh, his he, he can't taste anything. He said it's been like this almost a year. Or so he said he don't even want to go to a restaurant and buy food because he said he can't enjoy wow. it because he can't taste it. Wow. But he said he has to eat, mm -hmm. so he eats just to be eaten, you know, so that way to keep his strength up. But what, did you go through anything like that as far as your, your smell and your taste was concerned? Yes, I lost all sense of taste. I lost all sense of smell. Um, in one area of my body, I, I got the strangest rash. So a lot of people don't talk about that rash. Mm -hmm. uh, but I got that. Um, I had a metallic taste in my mouth all the time, which stops you from eating because of that taste. 
I lost 26 pounds in a matter of maybe about two weeks. I couldn't drink water because water tastes like I was drinking syrup. Mm. So I found that a light Gatorade was all that I could drink. And I would force myself to drink it um, to keep myself from being dehydrated. Uh, some people lose the sense of taste and smell for a few days, but mine's went over for about a month. So for about two months, I was out of work. And you had mentioned about a lot of people uh, who were admitted to that COVID floor that did not survive COVID. My doctor said to me that my greatest chances of surviving COVID would be for him not to admit me on that floor. And so I'm grateful that he did not admit me on that floor. He said, you know, your vital signs are good, so I'm just gonna send you home. I just believe that you'll have a greater chance of surviving this deadly virus at home, at home. But yes, every symptom that COVID brought on, I had. And as the days went by, that's when it got worse. And when I spoke with a representative from the CDC, they called me to ask me what were my symptoms and what led me to the hospital, what took me to the hospital. Um, the only thing was that uh, my nose was just draining so bad and the fever, that's what took me to the hospital. But I went back and I looked on the logs because we have the, the contract, a contact, excuse me, tracing book at work. Mm -hmm. So I went back and I looked on that day because we take fever temps each day, we take the temps. And my temperature was 96.9. And so the representative from the CDC said to me, so the virus has found a way to mutate itself in the upper respiratory tract without even being detected by the fever. And this is what makes it so deadly. They were wondering why is it that all these people were at these gatherings, everyone had their temperature checked and they all had on masks, but out of 50 people, 35 people ended up contracting the virus is because it's a silent killer mm -hmm. and it found a way to mutate itself through the upper respiratory tract without even being detected because I didn't have a fever that day. I just had a runny nose and that was it. And then later on that evening was when a cough came and then the fever came. Mm -hmm. So it, it's very, it's so, so deadly so so deadly well we're going to get off that subject but before we do i want you to take a look at that camera on the side of you and just uh let people know what you think they should do as far as this virus is concerned uh as far as uh just give your suggestions i mean they don't have to take it but let them know how you feel about uh being vaccinated so just look at that camera and tell them. Well, I believe that the scientists and doctors who have created the vaccine, I believe that there is a lot of study that has gone into it. And I understand people's concern about how the vaccines were created so fast and for something of this magnitude that it would take years for a vaccine to be created to work effectively. As with any vaccine, it's so important if you have underlying conditions and chronic conditions to check with your doctor first and foremost. I do believe that it's a personal decision to get the vaccine and so it has to be something that you are going to be able to live with when you make that decision. As with any and every vaccine that we've ever taken in our life, measles, mumps, rubella, whooping cough, uh, we take tetanus shots. A lot of those things we don't know a lot about, but it's just important to know that if it's something that's going to help 
save humanity then just make a wise decision. There are a lot of people who cannot get the vaccine because of underlying conditions that prevents them from getting the vaccine. And, and that, hey, that doesn't make you a bad person because uh, you don't have the vaccine. So it's important. I think it's a personal choice for each and every person but it's important for us to do all that we can for humanity. Well, thank you for that. Now, I got a couple more subjects that I want to try to cover before our time runs out. One is, um, if you want to talk about it, you can. If you don't, you don't have to. Um, I believe you're preparing yourself for an upcoming movie or uh, a film or something like that. Um, you want to elaborate? You want to speak a little bit about that? I mean, you can. If you don't, you don't have to. But if you want to, you can. Okay. Well, I am. I am very excited. I have landed um, a leading role uh, in a movie, and it too is going to be about the pandemic. Um, my character is Mary uh, Dinwoody, and um, I'm just really excited about it. And I won't expose a lot about it uh, because there will be a lot that will be coming um, in the future. But um, I'm really excited about uh, my role in that movie. Yes. Okay, well, thank you. Like I said, I didn't want you to expose too much. Uh, just letting people know what it is that you're doing. Um, let's go back to your TV show, Real Talk with Tina Mobley. Um, once again, if anyone wants to um, come on your show, uh, can you just give out that information one more time and let them know how they can get in touch with you and and talk to you about coming on your show. Yes, I'll be happy to. Uh, Real Talk with Tina Mobley. If you have a book that you have written, I would love to meet you. And you can reach out to me at Tina L. Mobley on Facebook. I'm also on Instagram. And you can message me and I will be happy to get back with you. If you have a life story that you want to talk about that has led you to doing what you are doing in life as far as your passion is concerned. If you have started a ministry, um, missionary work, I would love to meet you would truly, truly love to meet you. The community, there are so many wonderful people in the community who want to give and who want to help, but they just don't know where to begin or who to contact. So I would just love to feature you on my show one day to talk about your ministry and to let people know who you are. Okay, is it a, a way that they can reach you besides your Facebook? I mean, is it a number? that they can call? Yes, they can call me at 937-603-0774. Say that number one more time. 937-603-0774. <laughs> well, Ms. Mobley, I really appreciate you taking the time out of your very, very busy <laughs> schedule. I know how busy she can be. But I really appreciate you coming you. down and coming on my show and letting people know who Miss Mobley is. I just can't wait to get started on this play. Uh, you have some very good characters that's going to be intertwining with you. Mm. And um, I was telling them about it today, and mm. they sound so excited. Yes. They can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> they can't wait for this play. And I can't wait for it neither because I believe it's going to be, if not better, but close to Mama Knows a Lot. Mm. 
But wow. uh, I believe it's gonna it's gonna really really generate some things. So I like to thank you once again thank you. for coming on my show. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Cortez Jackson from Make a Star Production. And remember, if you would like to be a guest on my podcast, Make a Star Productions, or even my TV series, uh, you don't know my story. If you have a story that you want to tell, come on on the show. Tell your story. Let people know what's going on with you. Uh, open up. Remember, your story might be to help someone else. So once again, I want to say thank you so very much for tuning in. And until next time, everyone be safe and have a blessed day. Thank you so very much.